Welcome to the third part of the Agile chapter. In the previous part, we had a look at how to output the data to MongoDB using the standard table output step. We verified that everything was working, that there was no mismatch between the data types in Pentahool Cattle and MongoDB. So everything is running perfectly. Now we are in the position to start using the bulk loading step. On the left hand side in the bulk loading folder you find the MoneyDB bulk loader step. Just drag and drop it onto the canvas. Disable the old tab and create the new one and then double click on the MoneyDB bulk loader step. You can see that the configuration settings are fairly similar to the table output step. We can choose a connection here as well, in our case SLS underscore DMA. And then we also need the schema name, table name, puffer size and the log file name and so forth. We will not fill this out right now. We think a bit ahead and can imagine that we'll be using this step in several other transformations. So we don't want to hard code these settings here. It would be rather annoying if you had to change all the individual transformations in future in case the configuration details change. So we will use parameters instead. So just click OK here. There are two ways to configure parameters. One is by clicking on edit, edit the cattle properties file. And then just add your new parameters at the very end. You can see that I already defined here by MoneyDB by Cloder buffer size, log file, the M client location, the schema and the table name. So here you see here on the right hand side, I already specified the values. So set this up on your side. Make sure that the, especially the M client location is correct. It might be different on your system. So double check this. And once you define the parameters, click OK. Alternatively, you can define the parameters directly in the cattle properties file which resides inside the hidden folder called cattle inside your home directory. You can just open this with a normal text editor and add your new parameters at the end. In both cases you have to restart Spoon so that the changes can take effect. So once you've done that, let's go back, double click on the bulk loader step and then I will show you a very very handy shortcut. So put your mouse cursor into the input field for target schema and then press control space. I repeat again control space. You will see a, a list of all available parameters. As we know that our parameter starts with a V, we just press V and then we can scroll down and pick the respective one. So in our case it's gonna be schema, then you repeat the same process for all the other ones. Table, next the M client, buffer size and the log file. Then for the encoding choose UTF-8, tick trunk hit table and then click on get fields. The mapping should all be properly done. Just check it quickly and then click OK. Next up, let's run this transformation and make sure that everything is working as expected. So you see that 16 records get outputted to the table, so everything is working as expected. So let's sum up what we did in this sections. We were importing the raw data by joining all the input tables together. Then we were outputting the data first using the standard table output step. Once this was working successfully, we replaced it by the bulk loading step, which, please remember, is the way more efficient method of loading the data into a columnar database. Just remember this and you will be fine. So here we go. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next section.